Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mom Manual. Tara Williams here today. We have another amazing guest. Lizzie is an orthopedic and pelvic floor physical therapist who's conscious of holistic full body approach when it comes to healing and staying healthy. That is something who doesn't want. Lizzie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm very excited to be talking about all things pelvic floor, women's health, wherever wherever we go with this combo. All the things. And for the listeners, Lizzie is so gracious because we have already recorded this and the file got corrupted. So we are re-recording. Thank you, Lizzie, for coming back a second time. Um, Thank you. It's all good. Yes. You guys are not going to want to miss. So Lizzie, give us your background. Tell us how you got into this, all the things. Yeah. So I first started out in an orthopedic physical therapy setting, and this was a really interesting setting because it was chiropractic and physical therapy kind of combined. And so I was seeing a little bit of everything from your total hip replacement to neurological issues is kind of all across the board. And it was during that time where I really started to turn my focus towards women's health, women's health, because so many people would come into me telling me things such as having incontinence after baby or low back pain that just wasn't resolving with other kind of treatments. And even my family members and friends who talk about all these quote unquote, normal things that happen, happen as you become a mom. And the more I researched it and with my physical therapy background, I was like, you know, I can help people with this. And I know there's a way that we don't have to live with these things. So I dove headfirst into that subject and I have not looked back. I ended up stopping at that clinic and starting my own practice where I treat primarily women's health, fertility, pregnancy, postpartum, all those things. So all these things can definitely be worked on as a mom. I love what you said about quote unquote normal. Um, I, I I don't know if people even know this, but I spent a short time in my career in um, it was pharmaceutical sales and it was for people who had ulcerative colitis And so we would give them, ours was really kind of that last line of treatment, but they would say, oh, it's just normal to go to the bathroom 20 times a day. And we're like, that is not normal. And they're like, oh, but you know, my boss knows. So like I go at lunch and then I have the routine where I don't drink my coffee. And we're like, no, 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 no. Like none of that's normal. And I I think in, we're in 2023 and it feels like just in the last couple of years, a light is really being shed on women's health on so many of these things we go through, like incontinence, lower back pain. Like those are not normal things to live with. So, um, tell us about starting your own practice. And you said you kind of see everybody from being pregnant to post, but where do you have a sweet spot or, you know, who's really like coming in a lot that you're seeing. Okay. So I started my practice in 2020, just in the heart of the the world. Um, but I think that happened with a lot of people, just a whole shift in, in, in our life. So I started my practice 2020 and I really just started with kind of seeing bits of everyone, but focusing on that women's health Mm -hmm. as I was getting more certifications and just really getting more experience with that kind of clientele. And so now I primarily focus on, like I mentioned, pregnancy, postpartum, and then fertility as well. I would say the bulk of my clientele is treating mercy therapy, which is the fertility aspect. And then, um, postpartum, I do see my pregnancy clients, but the, the fertility and postpartum would be my sweet spot for sure. So I do that. And then I also have my online business and just Instagram that I'm running. So that's a whole other ball game. Yeah. No, tell us about that and how those intersect. Cause I, I think one thing that I love about this podcast is we have so many women who reach out and they say, you know, I have a side hustle or I've dreamed of something. So how do those two pieces merge? Yeah. I, well, first of all, I never envisioned myself starting my own practice or being online or anything like that. And it really just kind of happened. And then I was pushed by my husband and some family members and I just did it. And I was like, I have no idea how this is going to go, but we're going for it. So I really started my Instagram just because I started a business and was wanting to market it and um, just have something to show for my business. And it really just kind of grew from there from, I mean, I just put out different exercise tips, pelvic floor tips, random things about being a mom. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, And so it turned into somewhat of a business as well, just with working with, you know, different partnerships, different um, people online, and then starting online programs, which I have a postpartum one coming out this summer, but um, yeah, it's, 
it's been a lot, but it's super fun. And I love connecting with people on there and just hearing people's stories and even them doing a few exercises from the stuff that I share. That's a huge thing to know. Like the simplest things can make a huge difference in your health. And so to hear people talk about, you know, I did this exercise and this, and I did it for however many weeks. And I've actually noticed a huge change in my low back pain or incontinence. It's like, yeah, it really doesn't take much sometimes. So yeah. that's like, I always think, okay, if I don't have a full hour block, like I can't go work out and I'm like, no, like walking for 10 minutes is better than not doing anything. Oh my um, gosh. That's a point to drive home for sure. A little bit, but I want to focus on Instagram just a second. I know this is a little bit of a deviation from the topic, but if for anyone who's thinking about having a side hustle or a business or, you know, wanting to step into their own practice, like Instagram is marketing. Like that's what it is. And it's putting out good free content to your subscribers to give them a peek of who you are, to get them interested, to then have them want to involve, engage in something that is paid, like an online program. And what I think is so amazing about Instagram and this marketing vehicle that it is, it's a, it's also a connection, right? So you talked about connecting with other women. Um, I, you know, having this podcast, I had never heard of like going for any type of pelvic floor specialist, any, any of that. I never heard of that. And I have four kids and I tried to find somebody local and there isn't anybody local to me. So that was surprising too. Um, and when I say local, I mean, there were people, but about a 45 minute drive and that with my busy lifestyle is just too far. So it's amazing to me to think, okay, I can't physically go to somebody, but I can find somebody like Lizzie and do one of your programs and do it at home, low cost by myself with your guidance. And if I have a question, I can DM you. So I love that side. Like, obviously I have my own business, but I am just, I love Instagram. Like I'm a big advocate of getting on there, finding the right people connecting. And then if you want to have your own business, like that is the place to start, like start it today. Okay. Exactly. Um, that that's our, that's our side combo on start your own business, because I just think women have so many amazing ideas and I want them to put them out and there. And note on that, it is not too saturated. I even thought when I started three years ago, I was like, there's already too many big accounts. Like I'm, I'm never going to make it, but I'm just going to, whatever. I'm just going to see how this goes. And I'm just here to say there's room for everybody. People want to hear what you have to say. So absolutely yeah. go for it. If you're thinking about it, don't be afraid. Yeah. And everyone has such a different approach. I mean, we have a lot of yeah. sleep consultants on here because at Dream Mom Baby, that's what we, you know, do and talk about is sleep. And it that people always say, oh, I thought that, you know, they wouldn't want to hear from another sleep consultant, but everyone has a little bit of a different approach. So I, yeah. I totally love that. Okay. So let's get into any of the mamas who's on here. And when you're talking about treating women who, is it infertility or fertility or just being pregnant in general? So the fertility aspect is, I, yes, those who are struggling with infertility okay. um, who have tried medical treatment or just have been going such and such time and have not gotten the results that they wanted. So, okay. So tell us a little bit about that. So for anyone who's listening is like, whoa, wait, wait, like I'm struggling with infertility. Like what, what does any of ortho anything Lizzie's doing have to do with it? Tell, tell us yeah. what so this is definitely something that is a little more up and coming or being a little more well-known for fertility. It's the conservative aspect of it. So, um, I do a specific treatment called Mercier therapy. However, there are different kinds of physical therapy, manual approaches and visceral approaches, which visceral means organs. So working with the organs and stuff like that, but Mercier therapy specifically is working deep into the uterus. So deep visceral manipulation of the uterus and ovaries. And then we work into the abdomen, low back, glutes, hips, all that kind of stuff, because all of that affects how our organs move and flow and the blood flow to them, all that kind of stuff. So essentially we're trying to help promote blood flow to that area, promote circulation, and just promote life back into those organs that we're so desperately looking to grow life. So it's a really, really beautiful therapy because it does it, not just the physical aspect of it, but we go into the mental and spiritual aspect of it too. So it's a very holistic approach. And I think a lot of times with fertility, you know, I went through fertility struggles and going into the medical side of things, it's so much of medication here and medication there. And um, this is what's wrong with you. Yeah. There's just a lot physically, but also mentally to take on with it. So mercy therapy is just a really awesome, I wouldn't even say alternative approach, just another approach to mm -hmm seeking, um, that kind of result that you're looking for. So, and this, this is so interesting to me because when you talk about like the mental aspect of it, um, I mean, I am thinking about specifically my sister, but I could name probably 20 different people 
where she tried to get pregnant for quite a while. They did, I, I think it's IUI and then it wasn't working and they had done it, I believe twice. And then they said, okay, we're going to take a month off and then we're going to move right into IVF. And yeah. that month they took off, they got pregnant. Yes. So it's like, you hear that story over and over and over. It's like, when you stop putting so much pressure on it, that's the time. So talk to us a little bit about what, you know, you think of getting pregnant is like a sperm and an egg, but what is the mental piece and emotional and physical? Like, how does that all play into it? For sure. So we, if you think of different energies and ener- like we all are energy beings, think of it when you walk into a room, you can get people's vibe. Like you can get the feel of the room. And so we hold our energy and our struggles in certain areas of our body. And the sacral area is a huge place. We hold trauma or Mm -hmm. mental struggles like that, especially as women. And so when we allow ourselves to feel what's going on and just sit with it and allow those emotions to happen and be processed, it can just change the way we look at fertility. Um, and that's easier, you know, said than done for sure. And that's where the piece of you know, you kind of stop trying quote unquote, when you have that IVF cycle coming up and then you end up getting pregnant. And it is because a lot of times that stress is relieved and you're just not holding so much pressure to yourself. Um, but again, that's way easier said than done. So, um, during our sessions, we just kind of talk about those struggles and different things we can do as far as meditation, breath work, affirmations, things like that, that plays such a big role on our mental health and fertility too. And tell me, I, I, and and I'm remembering this from the last time we recorded, oh, yeah. but the Mercier therapy, tell us the origins of that. Cause I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. So it started with, her name is Dr. Jennifer Mercier and she is located in Chicago and she is a massage therapist, midwife, naturopath. And she came up with this type of therapy because she herself was having her struggles yeah. and so, um, started doing research on it. And, um, from what they show with the research and the years of practice that she has done is there's an 83% success rate within that first year of during doing mercy therapy of conceiving and, um, you know, mercy therapy can be done on its own. It can be done in conjunction with IUI, IVF, medical induced cycles, or whatever the case may be. Um, but the results have been really wonderful. And even within my own practice, I have seen amazing results with it too. So even two of my clients, they, um, have gotten pregnant with twins and twins do not run in their family at all. So that's not a side effect of Mercier at all, but it's just interesting that has happened to my clients already. So, yeah. Okay. So again, if somebody's listening to this and they're thinking, you know, I really struggled having my first baby, we conceived maybe using IVF or IUI and Now I'm, they know all the things going into second baby, but they didn't know about this. Where would they find a resource? So there is, yeah, I know. It's like, is there anybody in my area? So I hope that there are more providers as time goes on, because I know I am the only provider in Kansas city. Um, but there is a website and I don't know if you can link this, link this yeah, we'll link or not. Um, but there is a website that shows where each Mercier provider is located within your state. So how, how do you spell this? M E R C I E R. C-I-E-R. Okay. And we will find that or we'll get it from Lizzie after and we'll link it for you guys. But I, I just think that's amazing. And, you know, this conversation is always difficult for me to have because I haven't had a miscarriage and I didn't have fertility struggles, but my sister did, who's so close to me. We have the same mom and dad, like it's, you know, what is the difference with us? And she's my best friend. And to watch her kind of go through that and just really like in step with her and see it, it's, it's really heartbreaking when you think about, um, you know, especially for her, they waited and they thought, okay, we'll be married for three or four years and like have fun and go and do all the things. And then like, we'll have our baby. And then it was like a few more years. And so it just felt like for her, her life was being delayed at every step. And, you know, it was like every Christmas that came by or every, you know, birthday celebration, it was like, well, we thought we'd have a baby by this time, or, you know, and you're buying the new house. You thought there'd be a baby there. So I yeah. love the idea of having this like, um, holistic approach that's, that's targeting on that mental, because it is such a mental struggle and it, it just sucks basically. And it's, I feel like it's so many people too, right? Like, do you have any statistics on how many women and I guess women and men, but struggle with getting pregnant? Like what percent of people? You know, I don't have that person, but I know one in four women do miscarriage. And 
actually yeah. 50% of the time it is male factor. So that is a huge thing to be looking into and just like the lifestyles we lead. Um, but even just when I was going through my struggles of fertility, the amount of people who I just connected with who were struggling yeah. as well, I just was amazed that yeah. so many people either had a miscarriage or were struggling. And I do think I really don't know what it is, but I do think more people are sharing that side of things or sharing their struggles. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if there's an increase of fertility issues or if more people are sharing about it. But um, I know when I was going through that, I was looking for something that was just a little more holistic. Like, what can I do to be proactive? I had a really hard time of just sitting and waiting for yeah. even the next medicated cycle or whatever it was. So um, yeah, just to have something to offer for those who are yeah. in the creating period. Yeah. I, I, I love that. And, and I think it's something where it's like, if you are even thinking about it, like get signed up, find a provider, hopefully there's somebody near you um, sooner than later. Now, if there's not somebody near you, is there, do you have, you mentioned some online programs, like, do you have a program that people can do this at home? Or is it really describe a little bit more like, okay, I'm coming cool. into for the first time. And okay. I'm like, had infer- I've had infertility struggles. We're looking to get pregnant. Like Lizzie, I'm here. What is physically happening at this one hour appointment? Yeah. So with mercy therapy, it really is a very hands-on kind of okay. treatment. So it is something you do want to seek a provider for. Um, hopefully in the future, I can have some sort of program that can be done at home a little bit more. Um, but just the nature of it, you do need to see somebody in person. However, there are ways you can do breath work things, yeah. um, like diaphragmatic breathing, breathing into that area and different yoga type of flows. So, um, there are like, you can even get on YouTube and look for, you know, fertility yoga, because it just allows you to get into certain positions that open up the pelvis and breathing into the pelvis and things like that. So all of that does help. Um, but for the hands-on piece, it really is good to go yeah. see somebody who does that. And then is that, you know, for the women who are fortunate to have somebody close by, like, is it, do you go once a week? Do you go once a month? Like, what does that look like? So the protocol is one time a week for six weeks, okay. and it's about 45 minutes to an hour that you're doing hands-on treatment in that session for six weeks. And then after yeah. six weeks, you're pregnant, bam. <laughs> right. I wish that was always the case. Some women, it does take some time for their bodies to heal. And I have had people who get pregnant during our sessions. Yeah. Um, so it just really depends. And that's why the statistic is within that year, um, because there is so much that needs to happen with just healing your body and allowing that blood flow to kind of beef up that line or whatever the case may be. Okay. And now how about the women who are listening that are like, okay, I'm pregnant and I'm totally uncomfortable. What would it look like if they wanted to come meet with a, a pelvic floor um, specialist? That's absolutely a great idea because not only will it help you through pregnancy, but it can help you prepare for labor and just getting set up for that postpartum recovery, because we know that is an intense recovery, right? Um, but if you're coming in during pregnancy, it would be just like any other type of evaluation. We're going to check muscle strength, range of motion. Um, if you're having any aches or pains, we definitely address those areas. So hands-on manual therapy, and then we make sure that you're given exercises that are going to be beneficial through your pregnancy to help strengthen the pelvic floor, strengthen the deep core, which again, is going to help set you up for that postpartum period, but then also addressing the other aspect of it. So um, not only strengthening the pelvic floor, but relaxing it too, to prepare for labor and delivery. So very much like an, any other kind of evaluation, um, yeah. just very specific to your pregnancy needs. And then same thing, you kind of come in like once a week. Is that the idea? It really, really depends on the provider and your specific issue. I would say for my prenatal clients, I am seeing them if they're not having serious issues, maybe once or twice a trimester. And okay. then if they are having an issue, then, um, you know, it's once every two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Um, since my sessions are one hour appointments and it's just me and them working together, we can get a lot done. And then it's them working on things on their own. Yeah. I remember during my first pregnancy, I had, I think it's called sciatic nerve. Yes. Sciatic. Yeah. yeah. And it, it would be like a lightning bolt was shooting down my back. Like out of nowhere, I'd be like, ah, oh, I'm paralyzed. So common during pregnancy. Yes. So like, is that something where I would call you and be like, oh my gosh, massage it out. Or how, like, how does that work? Totally. Yeah. So sciatica is super important or not important, but it's super common during pregnancy. And this is something that PTs treat all the time, uh, specifically pelvic floor PTs. So 
that usually happens due to just things changing with the pelvis. The baby could be sitting differently on those nerves causing that issue. So yes, we do a lot of hands-on manual release of the glutes, low back, um, hip flexors, whatever is kind of in that area causing the issue. But then a lot of it is just talking about lifestyle too, and how you're sitting, how are you moving? Are you, you know, staying in a certain posture constantly? What does that look like for you? And then of course, specific exercise to address the strengthening as well as mobility in that area too. So it's a very well-rounded picture that we want to paint for, um, any kind of dysfunction, but specifically sciatica too. Yeah. I love so much talking to pelvic floor physical therapists. And I've, I've had, I I think you're the third person who's actually come on because it's just like, I've had four kids. It's just, I did not even know this existed. And there's so many things that we talk about again, being normal that you just think, Oh, it's part of pregnancy. It is what it is. And no, it's not like you, there's a, there's an option to treat it. So beyond sciatic, sciatic nerve, am I saying that right? Uh-huh. Sciatic nerve, sciatic nerve. Mm-hmm. What, what other things that, um, women may think, okay, I'm, this is normal. I'm pregnant. Like that is a, not a red flag, but a reason to come into a pelvic floor physical therapist. Yeah. So we'll try to narrow, narrow this down to the main ones, but I would say number one top is incontinence. So leakage during pregnancy. Uh, I think even me as a pelvic floor PT, I had some times where I had some incontinence or I sneezed and I leaked. I was like, Whoa, this is a little bit foreign to me. I was not prepared for this. And these are things that yes, they can happen during pregnancy just due to either pelvic floor kind of weakening as you grow or just the load that is being put on whatever the case may be. But there are things during therapy that we can go over such as you know, is it more of a tight pelvic floor? Do you have a weak pelvic floor? And then talking about addressing that range of motion and how you can strengthen it, not only with pelvic floor strength, but overall full body strength kind of thing. So incontinence is definitely common during pregnancy, but it's something we can address during our therapy sessions. All right. So we have sciatic nerve incontinence are those kind of top two. Top two, and then um, pubic symphysis dysfunction, which is also known as lightning crotch. So, oh my gosh, I remember you talking about this last time. I did not have that. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what? What is that? Okay. Oh my gosh. The amount of women who experience this, it is so, so common and it can kind of fall into postpartum um, just due to the weakening of the ligaments and everything. So, during pregnancy, the hormone relaxin does increase. However, that is not something to blame on our low back pain, pubic symphysis kind of issues, but it is a factor for sure. So as your pelvis grows, your pubic symphysis is the joint that sits between your two hip bones. So basically right where your pubic bone is, that's where your pubic symphysis is. So this can kind of loosen just a little bit. And with single leg movements, you can get that feeling of lightning crotch, which is just an intense pain in that area and kind of shoots up the body. So, um, we work very on, similar to that sciatic yeah. nerve. Pain. Yeah, it is. It's, it's just where it's that lightning bolt almost of just this. I, it, and this is a, I feel like it's, I remember describing to my husband saying, I feel like someone is stabbing me with a knife. Like just, it's an immediate, like, ah, so, exactly. I, okay. Those, so now, but that's in the crotch, which sounds even yes. worse in the crotch. Yes. So <laughs> we talk a lot about doing double leg movements or how to brace properly. And then of course the pelvic floor aspect too, but, um, yeah, that is another huge complaint during pregnancy. Just that's such a funny thing. <laughs> I okay. So, so those are the top three then. I would say so. Of course, low back pain, um, that's very common as well. And there's so many different routes to that issue. But as we know, as the belly grows, our posture changes and just center of gravity. So um, yeah, I would say those would be the top four, sciatica, pubic symphysis, leakage, and low back pain. Got it. You know, so I actually, I did have really bad lower back pain with my second pregnancy. And again, I just thought, oh, it's normal. My girls are really close in age. They're 14 months apart. So I thought, okay, you know, I just carried a baby. Then I was, my daughter was only three months old when I was pregnant with my second daughter. And so I just had like the worst back pain. I also had an epidural. So for some reason, I don't know where I read, but like that contributed to your lower back pain. So I actually went to a physical therapist. So it was not a pelvic floor physical therapist. And this person for sure had no knowledge or treatment or like, there was nothing about the fact that I was pregnant. It was just, I went in and I'd get my back adjusted. And it was this really crazy thing because it was, I want to say I went in every other week, every two weeks. 
-hmm. And it felt a little bit like voodoo science because I would go in, I'd get my back cracked, my neck cracked. Like it felt amazing. Mm -hmm. But then like day 10, seriously, it was every week at day 10, like it would start feeling bad again. And I'm like, what is happening? It just felt like such a band-aid approach. Yeah. Um, how, and that is not a knock on the profession, but tell me for anyone who's kind of going through that same thing, like, oh man, I, I'm going in and then, you know, yeah. the band-aid. how, how do you, what do you think of that? Okay. So first of all, physical therapy is such a broad scope of practice. So when you're searching for something specific like pelvic floor, I highly recommend finding an actual pelvic floor PT or someone who is very knowledgeable of that. And I say that because in physical therapy school, we learn a broad range of things. And even in our anatomy lab, we really barely touched on the pelvic floor and we had no women's health elective. So it's something I learned through all of my continuing education and post PT school. So that's why it's really important to find somebody who's very knowledgeable on that um, subject because they will be able to hone in on the root issues of maybe that low back pain or, um, you know, things that aren't resolving with different kind of physical therapy approaches. So yeah, it's not a knock on, you know, other PT fields or anything like that. It's just different specialties for sure. Um, so I I agree. It was like, I was at like a generalist, but for like a skin issue where I should have been at a dermatologist kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we're talking about band-aid approaches, I, um, yeah, this is something I preach on all the time is finding the root issues. And this goes for really anything in your health. Um, so for, you know, the musculoskeletal system in general, finding a root cause is really going to ultimately give you long-term success. It may be frustrating at first and you may not see results instantly, but when you really stick to the protocol or be consistent with some of that rehab or whatever it is you're given, it can make significant changes down the road. So sometimes the band-aid approaches, yes, it gets you out of pain quickly and stops that pain cycle, but then we really need to jump into, okay, how do we fix this? What's the root issue? So yes, the first initial decreased pain, but then let's work towards that long-term decrease of um, symptoms. Yeah. And I know that um, in, in your bio and just conversations of having you on the podcast, that really is your mantra, if you will. And you had talked about kind of having these like 10 minute routines, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, and this is where my program that's coming out, I'm very, I make sure that we don't go over on time just because I know time is so precious precious. And especially as a mom, um, if we don't have, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes and we're like, oh, okay, we're probably just not going to do that. Right. So I, that's something I want to bring home is you can make significant changes with 10 to 20 minutes a day. Right. And it's really about just mind muscle connection. And when you can learn studies, even show this, when you can just focus in and put your mind into what muscle is working you make way more changes than when you just go through the motions. So you can do an hour long workout and not really be focusing on what you're doing, just kind of get through it. Yeah. Or you can do a 20 minute workout and really be focusing on connecting. So for example, to that pelvic floor and deep core yeah. and make lasting changes. So it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I love that. And, and, and I don't know if we talked about this last time, but I have really recently over the last year gotten really into, um, Pilates and yoga and like the breath work and just, you know, if that's taking a 10 minute walk and it's all for me, I mean, this is, this is not pregnancy related, but just, it's just that mental load. Um, you know, I'm running a business. I have a bunch of employees who's salary is like relying on our success. And I have four kids and I have a husband and I have friends and, you know, I have my sister and my family and like, just as any mom, any person nowadays, like a million things. And I feel like there's never that moment for me. We always talk about, you can't pour from an empty cup. And for me, like getting that, you know, 45 minute yoga class or that 10 minute walk, like that is my mental break that just like resets me. Um, and I can imagine for any of the women and I was there too, like the incontinence piece, like if you can just fix that, like that's one thing that every day you're struggling with, like take the 10 minutes and fix it. So can you describe what like a 10 minute routine would look like? Is that like a few exercises or is that something you can, t- you can talk about? Of course. So the way I would always start out my 